So to start off, eastern ribback salamanders are aplethodontid, which means that they do not have lungs, meaning that they need a constantly high humidity in order to breathe properly. This can be maintained by spraying the enclosure regularly or by using a substrate that is able to retain a lot of water without molding, such as what I have in my setup. The substrate I'm using is a mix of sphagnum moss, cocoa fiber, and cocoa bark. It's been holding up really well and it hasn't molded at all. Eastern redback salamanders are actually immune to a lot of fungal diseases that would typically affect other amphibians. For enclosure size, anything within the ballpark of 12 by 4 inches would be good for 1 to 3 salamanders, in my opinion, and anything higher than that would be good for a small colony of them. Typically, these salamanders are solitary, but they have been known to to live in small communal families, usually made up of related individuals. Feeding these guys is just about as easy as housing them. They require small invertebrate prey, such as pinhead crickets, black soldier fly larvae, small mealworms, white worms, anything you would feed a dart frog or any very small amphibian. I don't think they'd take pellets, although I haven't tried. They seem to be more interested in moving prey. Mine is currently on a staple diet of bloodworms with calcium and multivitamins mixed into them, and he seems to be doing very well. While you can technically handle any amphibian, I wouldn't recommend doing it with bare hands. Most amphibians are very sensitive to chemicals and salts that are on your skin, and this can cause long-lasting damage if enough of it is absorbed. So if you're going to handle them, I would suggest doing it very sparingly and with wet hands to avoid any salts or chemicals from your hands to leach into their skin. So the final thing I'll touch up on is acquiring redback salamanders, and this is going to depend greatly on where you are. Here in Ontario, redback salamanders are of least concern species and are very plentiful, so collecting one or two probably wouldn't harm the environment too much. In some areas, they're actually one of the most abundant vertebrates in the given area, so I see no harm in collecting for the sake of educating and preserving the species. However, they may be protected in some places, so I would look at your local laws before going to collect them. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about these guys. I hope you learned a little bit more about them, and I hope you maybe choose to keep one if you think you are ready. So with that being said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.